Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Wait, what are we? Thursday. Good Thursday morning to you, boys and girls. I am back. We are still continuing week six. I cannot believe we are in week six. So week six, day, day four? Yeah, day four. So today we're reading chapters seven and eight. I hope you've been watching the videos. Monday I did one and two. Tuesday I did three and four. Wednesday I did five and six. And today I am doing six. No, I'm doing seven and eight. I always forget. I'm sorry. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to tell you is I uploaded a video onto YouTube. It is on my YouTube channel. And it is a video that Dan Gutman, the author of My Weird School Books, he made a shout out. He did a shout out to Sharp Elementary. Isn't that awesome? He was only doing it for some schools. And when I saw that, I said, oh, he has to do it for Sharp. So I sent him a message very fast. I did it really quickly. I said, I said, Dan Gutman, can you please send a message to our school? And he did it for us. And then other schools tried to do it. And he said, no no more. So we were very lucky. So make sure you watch that video. Um, it is super duper cool. And anyways, okay, so let me get started on our, on our book. So today I'm doing chapter seven and eight. So chapter seven is my genius idea. Here we go. My mom told me that her catering company wasn't doing very well. The six moms still didn't have any customers and nobody wanted to buy their fancy sandwiches. Mom said it was because of the economy whatever that means. But the food drive at school, it was still going great. Every morning, there was more food in the cardboard boxes by the front office. And then, finally, one morning, we saw a big sign on the wall. We did it! We collected 3,000 pounds of food. Great job, elementary school students. And here's a picture of that. We did it! Woo! It's a lot of food. At lunchtime, I sat in the vomitorium with the guys and Andrea and her girly friends. They sat at the next table so they could annoy us. Me and Michael had peanut butter sandwiches that weren't fancy at all. Ryan and Neil, the nude kid, he bought the school lunch. Ugh, disgusting. When, when, when is Mr. Klutz going to jump out of a plane in an ape suit? Asked Neil, the nude kid. I hope he doesn't ask where, where, I hope he doesn't. He does it when we're at ASKK, said Michael. Hey, do you think Mr. Tony will pogo juggle or egg jog today? Asked Ryan. Who knows, said Neil. He sure is a weird guy. Maybe Mr. Tony isn't really the ASKK director at all. I told the guys, did you ever think of that? What do you mean, AJ? Asked Michael. Well, maybe Mr. Tony is an evil genius who wants to take over the world. I said, maybe he kidnapped our real ASKK director and has him tied up in some railroad tracks. Stuff like that happens like all the time, you know. At the next table, Andrea, she looked all worried. What's the matter? I asked her. Are you afraid that our real ASKK director is tied to the railroad tracks? No, Arlo, Andrea said. I'm just worried about Mr. Tony. Well, what about him? I asked. My mother is a psychologist, she said, and she told me that some people, that some people are so desperate to be famous that they'll do just about anything just to draw attention to themselves and, you know, make people like them. Like those parents who said their son was up in a hot air balloon last night, last year, and those two people who crashed at a party at the White House. You think Mr. Tony is crazy? I asked. No, Andrea said, but it's sad that he thinks he has to do such crazy things so that people will like him. My mom thinks that's why he's addicted to cigarettes, too. I know how to solve this problem, I said. How? asked Emily. It's simple. I told them, we just need to make Mr. Tony famous. And how are we going to do that, Arlo? Andrea asked. We all thought and thought for a million hundred seconds. And then that's when I came up with the greatest idea in the history of the world. It was like a light bulb just appeared in my head. Mr. Tony is great at making pizza, right? Right, everyone replied. 
Well, I said, what if he made the biggest pizza in the world? That would make him famous. Maybe he would get into the Guinness Book of World Records. And if your mom is right, maybe Mr. Tony would stop smoking too. That just might work, Arlo, Andrea said. AJ, you're a genius, said Michael. I should get the Nobel Prize for that idea. That's a prize that they give out to people who don't have bells. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of chapter seven. So we are doing chapter eight. Chapter eight is called The Biggest Pizza in the World. Ready? Woo, let's see what happens. Instead of going out for recess, we all rushed over to the school library. Our media specialist, Mrs. Rupee, was in there eating her lunch. To what do I owe the pleasure of your company, she asked. That's grown-up talk for, what are you doing here? We need to see the Guinness Book of World Records right away, I told her. I was out of breath. Miss, Mrs. Ruby put her hand on my forehead. AJ, are you feeling okay? She asked. I've never heard you say that you wanted to read a book before. Maybe I should call an ambulance and get you to the hospital. He's fine, said Neil, the nude kid. We need to do some research, some research Mrs. Ruby. We, we want to find out how the biggest, we want to find out how big the biggest pizza in the world is. So Mrs. Rupee, she got out the Guinness Book of World Records off the shelf and we all gathered so we can look in it to see. Let's see, she said, leafing through the book. Here's a man who balanced a refrigerator on his teeth for 10 seconds. That's remarkable. And here's a man who ate a whole bicycle. <gasps> That's amazing. Nothing about giant pizzas in there, asked Ryan. Finally, Mrs. Ruby found the section for food, and there it was. The biggest pizza in the world was made in South Africa in 1990. It was 386 feet around and it ha and it had 1764 pounds of cheese and 1985 pounds of tomato sauce on it wow said michael which is mom upside down that's a big pizza how could we possibly make a pizza bigger than that one asked ryan that's when i came up with the greatest idea in the history of the world our school collected over 3,000 pounds of food. We could use the food from the food drive to make our pizza. The food we collected is for hungry people, AJ, Mrs. Ruby said. It would, be, it would be wrong to use that food just to break a world record. Nobody puts beans or soup on pizza anyway, said Ryan. Okay, so maybe my idea wasn't so great after all. We all thought and thought and thought. I thought so hard that I thought my head was going to explode. Psh. Suddenly, Andrea got a gleam in her eye. I know, she said. The six moms can supply the ingredients for our pizza, and our school could be the first customer of our mom's new catering company. Yeah, said Emily, who always agrees with everything Andrea says. It was a good idea, I did have to admit. But there wasn't any light bulb over Andrea's head and I wasn't about to admit out loud that she had a good idea. Well, that's the dumbest idea in the history of the world, I told Andrea. That's the end of chapter eight, boys and girls. So, so to sum it up, they need to break a world record. They need to help Mr. Tony. They're trying to figure out how they're gonna make the biggest pizza to break the other record from South Africa. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. I will be reading chapters 9, 10, and 11. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed today's Read Out Louds. Again, don't forget to subscribe so that way you can get my, uh, my videos. You can get alerted when I post a video. And again, also, don't forget to watch Dan Getman's Hello video to Sharp Elementary. All right, boys and girls, have a terrific Thursday. We'll see you. Bye.